Okay, my name is John Montgomery, and my father was William Montgomery. He was in the U.S. Army from April of 1943 to October of 45. Um, he originally started out in the combat engineers, and their troop was being trained for the invasion at D-Day. But uh, because my dad had typing on his resume as well as French, he was eventually pulled out and worked in military intelligence for most of the war. And unfortunately, the, um, his first group that he trained with basically was wiped out at D-Day. And so my dad loved to tell the story about going home and talking to his typing teacher when he got back from the war and telling her that she was the one who saved his life. Um, and so because my dad was a typist, a lot of the letters he wrote home, he, he typed, which made it a lot easier for us to read. You've got a remarkable record of uh, the correspondence from your father. Yeah, what I have here is my parents basically wrote each other on a daily basis. And I put together a scrapbook and I got them to write some short stories. And I included some newspaper articles. So. These actually are copies. When my dad left Portsmouth, Ohio on the train, he took several uh, postcards with him. These are postcards that he wrote on the train going to Fort Thomas. Uh, here is my dad's injunction card that he, was sent to him and then other postcards that he wrote. And so a lot of his letters, I mean, you know, my dad had traveled out of Ohio during the Depression looking for jobs, but a lot of his letters, there's just a lot of excitement about being someplace different, communicating with my mother. Um, so, and a lot of his letters just talk about the mundane things, what they did on a daily basis. Here, he actually drew my mom a picture of a, um, they went to a concert in the stage. In this letter, he drew a picture of the uh, obstacle course that they had worked on that day. So I feel very fortunate that we have just tons of these letters, and this scrapbook represents probably about 25% of what the, the letters were. Um, I did want to talk about, you said that some people had brought some V-mail. Mm -hmm. During World War II, in order to keep mail coming back and forth at a low cost basis, what the military did was that they had standard forms that originally were eight and a half by eleven. So the individual would address it at the top, write their letter, the military would then censor it, they would photograph it on the microfilm and send it to Washington. Washington then would uh, print it out in these small pieces of paper which folded this way and stuck right into the envelope so that the address showed here. So it's a very efficient way for them to get tons of mail back and forth across the Atlantic. So my parents, as I said, saved everything, so I have a stack of these V-mail that I just remember as a kid always being up in the attic in a right. big box. So when my parents moved into a retirement center, I took them, I organized them by date, and went from there. But they also wrote each other, you know, in hand, so I have a lot of their handwritten things. Yeah. And I was able to put this together along with several short stories that my parents wrote about their experiences. That's wonderful. Uh, it's exciting for me because I feel like these letters are almost like a diary. You know, my dad talked about what he had for breakfast. You know, he talked about the baseball games they played in Hyde Park. And I think he said a lot of things that you can only say in letters, that if my mom had been sitting next to him, he probably wouldn't have said them. When I first started reading through my dad's letters, it was ironic because his letters were always very emotional, talking about how much he missed my mom, how much he loved her all the good times they had together. And then when I read my mother's letters, she was very flippant, telling jokes, goofy things my brother had done. And she never really talked about missing him. And I thought, that is just so odd, because my mother was always the one mm -hmm. who was more emotional. And then I guess it struck me that she was the one keeping the stiff upper lip. There's a letter in here from my aunt to my dad, telling my dad how my mom had uh, excuse me, had been losing weight, she hadn't been sleeping, 
and so I got a deeper insight, I think, into them as well. So I, I'm, I'm very thankful that I have these letters. That's a wonderful record. Yeah. You've done a great job putting it together. It's really Thank wonderful. You. It's, uh, it's been a nice project. This was a Christmas present for my brother and sister and all their kids. I made eight copies of this uh, to put together. That's wonderful. So the other thing I brought is this is a map that they were given to uh, bombardiers, to fighter pilots. They're also, they were called escape maps. It's made out of silk so that it would be very lightweight. It wouldn't you know, weigh down the pilot or the bombardier or whatever. Very lightweight, made out of silk so that if it got wet, uh, the writing would not smear and that it would be readable. So I believe on this side is Holland, Belgium, France, and Germany. And then on the other side is a uh, close-up of, uh, here's Aiken in Germany and different sections as well. Yeah, those are great. Well, thank you for bringing this in. This is really wonderful. Really terrific. Yeah. And if you want, I, I did mark some places in letters that I thought were memorable, if you would want me to read you anything. You might mark, or, or read one for us. Okay. There's one that I, I think is very touching. Because, again, you know, my father wasn't necessarily the emotional one in the family, but he talks about some, I think, poignant things. This is from... July of 45, you know, the war in Europe had ended. My dad is still in France. He says, Hun, every now and then we're reminded that there has been a war here and lots of people have suffered. It's hell to sit in a nice mess hall eating liver and onions with mashed potatoes and seeing these French children standing outside with their mouths watering just for a crumb. I just came out of the mess hall and a little kid ran up and reached into my mess kit and grabbed a small piece of liver that I wouldn't even eat. He gulped it down and I felt so bad that I hadn't saved him a larger piece. After all, I have a kid too and I'm sure hate to see him go hungry. In Germany it's even worse. They eat right out of the garbage can. So let's remember that we're not as bad off after all. After we are so far apart because we have each other. So I just thought that was That's pretty great. poignant. That's wonderful. Thanks again for bringing it in. Sure.